someone saying it's your boy someone who's holds me back again i'm here today in liverpool and in today's video we're going to be having a look at the regeneration of liverpool's waterfront and you're going to be joining me today i'm here in liverpool known for many famous icons and institutions in the modern world like the beatles liverpool and everton football clubs the races at aintree and Papalaki. but probably the most influential aspect spearheading the development of the city is its waterfront which helped grow the city into a powerhouse during the days of the British Empire. Liverpool as an industrial hub has depended on its strategic position on the River Mersey to fuel its success. According to Statista, between 2021 and 2022, even with the local cocoa, Liverpool was the fourth busiest seaport in the UK, handling 43 million metric tons of freight during this time period. Only Milford Haven, Grimsby and London could top that. Liverpool's original port, the Old Dock, opened in 1715. The dock would have served ships that were involved in the Atlantic slave trade, as was common with port cities at that time. By the 1750s, Liverpool was top of the pops when it came to the slave trade in ports in Britain. Many goods produced in Liverpool, like textiles, firearms and gunpowder, were used or were transported for use in activities relating to the slave trade. Following the abolishment of slavery and a switch to other means of wealth production, Liverpool continued its growing importance well into the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century. According to World Port Source, almost half of the world's trade was going through Liverpool at this time. Many different companies were based in Liverpool's docks, like Cunard Line, the International Cruise Line most notably. Moving into the 20th century though, the port began to lose its once tenable level of national importance. Similar to what had happened in London, the rise of containerization meant that boats were longer, wider, and chunkier, and current facilities would not be able to handle these big, chungus boats. Since then, activity at the port has died down and moved to locations further out of the city centre, with docks dotted in places like Birkenhead, Bootle and Seaford. One could easily go on for ages about the history of Liverpool, which could literally be summarised in the hatred of two things, Margaret Thatcher and the Sun newspaper. Anyways, from the wealth in its heyday, Many grand buildings were built by the port's owners to give the whole area a little bit of pizzazz. The Grand Port of Liverpool building was completed in 1907, the Liver building completed by the Live Group was done in 1911, and the Cunard building by Cunard, of course, was completed in 1917. These buildings and the surrounding areas form part of the proud history that Liverpool created, and of course it seemed wise to make sure that they got the recognition for all that. In 2003, whilst plans for redevelopment of different former Dockland areas had begun discussions, Liverpool City Council submitted nominations for the three buildings and three more elements of the local area to be nominated for UNESCO World Heritage status. Basically, that means that, ooh, damn, this place equals history history. For locations nomination to be granted and join the over 1,100 others, it has to fulfill one of these 10 criteria by either being a natural beauty or a cultural beauty. Example World Heritage Sites include the City of Bath in England, the Canadian Rocky Mountains and the Statue of Liberty. Liverpool's nomination was successful, being granted World Heritage status in 2004. Introducing the Liverpool Maritime Mercantile City, with it being described as the supreme example of a commercial port at a time of Britain's greatest global influence. The Mercantile City included the Pier Head, Albert Dock, Stanley Dock, Duke Street, Castle Street, and William Brown Street within its perimeter. In 2011, UNESCO noted their extreme concern at the proposed development of Liverpool waters in terms of the potential impact of its dense, high and mid-rise buildings on the form and design of the historic docks and thus on the outstanding universal value of the property. Liverpool Waters is a 5.5 billion pound project which aims to revitalize many of the disused Docklands, creating over 20 million square foot of mixed use development along the River Mersey. The development is headed by the Peel Group, who have worked on similar projects in Manchester, Chatham, and Glasgow. To add to the pain, in 2021, UNESCO had enough. The continued development of the waterfront had been cited as a detrimental to the site's authenticity and integrity with it being noted in a meeting that the final straw on the camel's back was the approval of the proposed new Everton Stadium at Bramley Moor Dock, adding to the serious deterioration 
and the irreversible loss of attributes that convey its outstanding universal value. The Mercantile City was stripped of its World Heritage status that year, with it only being the third ever site to lose its status. In my opinion, it kind of makes sense why UNESCO reluctantly pulled the plug. The waterfront is absolutely rammed with these new, shiny, tall buildings everywhere. However, to many, these developments signal progress, using these derelict areas and bringing something new to the city and the local area. Like, look, Everton might be getting relegated to the championship this season. Well, maybe not with Sean Dyche, but wouldn't they rather be losing games in their shiny new stadium with escalators and, you know, fancy beer and waterfront views and stuff? I don't know. Well, minus them sea levels rising, former Docklands have great potential. London saw a long strip and plonked an airport on it where you can turn up 20 minutes before your flight and still have time to get a deal before boarding. Here you've got a number of museums, a Tate Gallery, a concert and conference hall, and you've got boat tours at the docks as well. I really like what they've done with the waterfront here and although the city has lost a bit of that clout from losing its uh, UNESCO status, it's still got the Beatles and Concert Square. If you know, you know. One more thing, the transport links along the waterfront are shocking lads. That's one thing you're going to need to fix up. Well, you find me outside the MS Bank Arena just behind me here. If you like the video, make sure you drop a like, also drop a comment what you want to see in the future. Make sure you subscribe. It's been your boy Summoner Spores. It's starting to get windy. I'll catch you in the next video in a bit. Mm -hmm.